Welcome back, America. This is Honest Tax Returns, Part 2 of 2, presented to the American people, December 2016. Uh, we've heard this phrase a million times, it's the federal income tax, but how often have you thought about what it really means? The most important question about the federal income tax is, is it the federal tax on income? Or is it the tax on federal income? For that, let's uh, go to an analogy. We'll call it the black bus driver analogy. Is it a black man or a black driver driving a bus? Or is it a black bus being driven by a driver? My opinion is that a black bus driver is a driver driving a black bus. And therefore, the federal income tax is the tax on federal income. The reason I say that is because the black, the word black, is an adjective, and an adjective always describes the word that comes right after it. So the black bus is the is the black is the bus which is black, and the driver is the driver of the black bus. Therefore, that federal income tax is the tax on federal income. Now let us show through congressional um, paperwork, uh, Supreme Court cases, and also the IRS's own website that the federal income tax is a tax on the federal income. <clears throat> First piece of evidence I like to present is the original 1862 tax return, where it says to the effect that it is the income subject to a tax under the excise laws of the United States. Now, just in case you think this is some random library clipping, let's show you almost the exact same form, but this one is taken from the IRS website. Um, I don't know if it'll be there long, but go to it and see, see for yourself. Uh, and basically, it says exactly the same thing. You could read it if you like, but it says if you take away all the, uh, all the distractors, it says it's an income subject to an excise tax of the United States. Income subject to excise laws. So what is excise? Well, excise, if you talk to a surgeon, means to cut. To make an excision is to cut. So an excision biopsy is to, to cut something and take a biopsy of it. So an excise means to cut. In, in, in legal terms, excise laws is defined at Black's uh, Fourth Law Dictionary as a law imposing excise duties on specified commodities. Um, so, for instance, if you buy alcohol, you're subject to the excise tax on alcohol. Now, if you don't buy alcohol, are you still subject to the excise tax on alcohol? In other words, can you excise something that you don't have or that you don't use? I'll let you answer that question. The next piece of information I want to show you is the Congressional House Record from 1943. In there, I'm going to highlight two spots and I'm going to zoom in on them. And let's read what they say. The first, it says, the income tax is an excise tax and income is merely the basis for determining its amount. The second line says, the Supreme Court held that the tax based on income was not a direct tax but was an excise or duty and as such did not require apportionment among the states. That's Springer versus United States. Um, this decision rendered after the income tax had been thoroughly tested for a period of 10 years represents a deliberate determination as to the fundamental nature of the tax. So in 1888, that was before the 16th Amendment, it was an excise tax, and that was the fundamental nature of the tax. Let's read on in this um, congressional records. We're going to go to the next page. I want to highlight this little section. Um, and you can read the rest of it if you want. Just It'll take some time. And let's zoom in. And it says, It is still fundamentally an excise or duty with respect to the privilege of carrying on an activity or owning any property which uh, produces income. And then later on it says, um, It is an excise tax with respect to certain activities and privileges, which is measured by reference to the income which they produce. So, 
that's after the 14, uh, 16th Amendment, uh, Congress says it is still fundamentally an excise. Now, let's put these two pieces of information together. Here it was. It was in 1888 uh, an excise tax. And then later on in the state, in the, in the um, congressional records, it is described as still being fundamentally an income tax. Now, obviously, there are things in between, but I'll let you take the time to research it yourself. Uh, next, this is a quote from John Lucky, which is a, which, who is a legislative attorney with the Library of Con Congress, and he says basically that it is also an excise tax. I'll let you read that quote if you like. Next, I'd like to preserve, present to you three cases of the Supreme Court two of which are before the 16th Amendment and one of which is after the 16th Amendment. They will be covered later on in this presentation and other parts. But basically, they all say that uh, the, the federal income tax is an excise tax, is an excise tax or a duty. Um, so all three branches agree. Federal income tax is an excise tax. But suppose I'm wrong and all three branches of government are wrong. What is the IRS right about the federal income tax? Well, let's look at 1040 instructions. And there's a bunch of things that are sit, uh, written in the 1040 instructions. Among them are all these references to federal income, federal income tax, federal income tax. And you can see them all over the paperwork. Now, what do you notice about the way it's written? Well, the first thing I notice is that the word federal is not capitalized. That means it is an adjective. It is not a pronoun, as most people might think, because the federal government, you know, they think it's a pronoun. But it's, a, it's, a, it's an adjective. And what does an adjective do? Well, following nothing more than the standard rules of English grammar, we can say that the federal income tax is the tax on federal income based on the foregoing discussion about the black bus driver. What is the significance? Well, an excise tax can be lawfully avoided by avoiding the activity or abstaining from the benefit on which the excise is laid. If you wish to avoid federal income tax, then avoid federal income. What do I mean by that? Number one, don't accept federal income or statutorily defined wages. Number two, don't exercise or participate in a federal privilege which would result in income. Number three, don't claim federal income if you didn't, in fact, receive any federal income. Number four, don't let anyone else claim federal income on your behalf if you didn't, in fact, receive any. And number four is where everybody gets in trouble because we're always accusing each other of things that we didn't do or have. But most of all, throughout this presentation, you'll hear this. You've got to be honest. Just be honest. The truth will set you free. Okay? Like, for instance, here's Honest Abe. What do you think he says? He says, no federal income, no federal income tax. That is just a true statement. Much like Benjamin Franklin would have said, no farms, no farm girls. Those are equally uh, valid statements in logic and law and uh, in day-to-day in -day practice. So, to see practical examples of how these concepts are applied on IRS forms, please watch part one. The rest of this six-part video series will go in-depth to provide the theoretical support for the paperwork shown in part one. Thank you for obeying the law, um, for being uh, trustworthy, and, uh, and, 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 and please share. Please share, like, and comment. Because you have a duty, uh, to be honest, to obey the law and to keep your brother from harm and injustice. Please share this with another American. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Because if everybody knows this, everybody walks free. If only a few people know this, then the, the few people will get in trouble for, for what they know. End of part two. Thank you for watching.